Hi kids, hi everyone. I just came back from about a week's vacation at a lake cabin and I had an experience there that I'd like to tell you about. Um, but first, I'd like to remind you of something I said um, a few videos ago about how I see there being about four different ways of being in nature. Um, one way is to be fully present and using all of our senses to take in the beauty and the smell and, and the full experience and being fully present to it. Another way is to um, be curious, uh, kind of scientifically curious. Why is that turtle acting that way or why does that kind of plant grow here? Um, those kind of questions that can be answered through science. And another way is to be open to um, metaphors or symbols or like different kinds of messages um, that could be useful in our lives. So I had told the story of two eagles tussling over this long furry thing and almost to the point of death and um, how I use that to bring to mind something I was holding on to too tightly in my own life and needed to let go of. And the fourth way of being in nature is about being open to deeper truths, a deeper kind of wisdom that we can experience. And that one's a little harder to describe um, and hopefully the story will help. So uh, we rented a cabin that was on a lake, um, in front of the cabin was a lake, and then um, behind it was some grass and then a narrow dirt road um, and then on the other side of the road was a field that had horses in it. And one morning I was um, getting into the shower and I heard just this commotion of whinnying of horses, um, like crying out in distress. It was so loud. It sounded like there were so many of them. And um, so while I was in, my, in the shower, my friends, um, went out to see what was going on. And um, just as they were walking up to it, a, um, a pickup truck pulled up and they saw that there um, right near our cabin in this field was um, a horse that had died. A dead horse was right there. And um, a man jumped out of the pickup truck and my friend said that he looked like he was in shock and he turned to them and said, uh, my horse just died. And uh, my friend said, oh my goodness, do you know what happened? And the man said um, he didn't, but that he had driven out here because his daughter had seen it walking kind of oddly with its head down earlier. Um, so then uh, he moved the horse a little farther away from the road. And then my friends witnessed something rather beautiful. And um, they came and got me. And by this time I had gotten dressed and I went out there and I was able to witness this as well. So the man had driven away. The horses were all alone and they had lined up in single file. And one by one, they would um, stand in front of this horse that had died and um, put its head down and then would move on and the next horse would come and do the same thing and move on. And all of the horses, one by one, um, kind of paying their respects in this way. And that's what I thought of as I was watching this was um, different wakes and funerals that I have been to that look so similar to this, where the person that had died um, was in a casket and at Catholic wakes, there's often a, a kneeler that is put in front of the casket. And then one by one, we come up to our loved one and we bow our head down, we pay our respects, and then we move on and the next person comes up. Um, and so um, 
there was something really beautiful about this. And also, I mean, it was certainly very sad. Um, it was clear that the horses had feelings that they were grieving after they paid their respects one by one. There was this little clump of trees off to the side and they were all standing there facing the horse that had died. And then one would whinny um, and then the rest of them would whinny for a moment and um, and and then they would do that like one by one procession thing again um, that was really quite remarkable and it led to my having all kinds of questions um, you know first of all um, what does it mean that it looked so similar to a human kind of wake or funeral? Um, is there something um, deeper to, you know, to the, this connection, this universality of what grief or paying our respects um, looks like? And, you know, who knows? Did humans um, develop these ways of grieving, these kinds of rituals and such? after, you know, maybe hundreds of years ago watching animals do this? Um, I don't know. And what about our, um, our like animal instincts, our animal nature, when we refer to someone, say, acting like an animal, we mean that in a negative way, don't we? But um, is there something more kind of beautiful or profound to our animal nature? And, um, like I said, it seemed clear that these horses have feelings that they were grieving. Um, do frogs have feelings? Do bugs have feelings? Do mosquitoes have feelings? And um, if so, what does that mean? If I'm a person um, who values empathy and compassion, how do I extend that empathy and compassion um, to all who, um, have feelings. Um, you know, what do trees have feelings? Um, if one among them is chopped down or, or dies, um, do the rest of them grieve? Um, again, I have no idea. And this is often how um, deeper truths, uh, deeper wisdom come to us is in the form of questions. And then how do these questions um, shape us and how we are in the world. Uh, so now receive a blessing from the faith community who loves you. May you be open and aware to all of the, the sacred, the beauty, the wisdom um, alive in the world around us. And may you be well. Amen.